Sky Squad, we are back in the building. Yes, we are. And we got to talk about Basketball Wives from last night. I don't know if you guys happened to catch the episode, but you know. Of course I did. Okay, and so I'm going to give you guys the rundown, the highlights of the episode. We have finally gotten to the confrontation with Malaysia and Jackie. Okay, we also had a little bit of a hot moment between OG and Jennifer, which kind of leads me to start to wonder, is this how their relationship began to break down? Okay, so we're going to talk about that. Now, um, before we even stage dive into that, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell button, you know, all that good stuff. Join the texting community and grab yourself one of these coldest water bottles. Get it down in the link down below. Use my code to get 10% off. Mm, 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 mm. And get this nice cold water for, uh, this, this is, I think this would have been sitting for about 24 hours at this point, you know? Um, so yeah, you know, keep it cold, keep it cold. Now, with that being said, okay, we got to talk about the episode. Now, first thing we're going to do is rate this episode on a scale of 1 to 10. And on a scale of 1 to 10, I am going to give it an 8.5. I actually would almost give it a 9. Now, let me tell you why I'm going to give it an 8.5. And we're going to talk about it when we get to that part of the episode. But the reason I would give it an 8.5 really was because I felt like, okay, it was almost a 9. Okay, it was almost a 9. But what I did like about this episode was that I finally got some real understanding of what is going on with OG and why she feels the way that she feels, okay? So I really liked that. And it was a moment of vulnerability that she was able to have with two new ladies in the house. And we're gonna talk about why that's important when we get to that, that part of the episode. But we also, you know, for me, what I also loved was this idea that Malaysia finally comes around and she wants to have a conversation with Jackie and seeing how emotional Jackie got with regards to hearing that. I felt like this was somewhat of a relief for Jackie. And I also felt like it was real. It felt real to me. You know what I'm saying? So I like that. And I like the introduction of the two new ladies, not necessarily because I felt like they brought so much, but they did bring what was needed at that point in time. So I feel like they could end up being very good additions to the franchise. We just have to see how it continues to play out. But I want to know, of course, what you guys think of the episode. Let me know down in the comment section down below. Be real with your opinions. I want to know what you thought of the new ladies, Nia and Naria. I want to know what you guys thought of, you know, what you heard from OG last night, how you felt about it. I also want to know what you thought about, you know, this lead up to the Jackie and Malaysia conversation as well. Let me know down in the comment section down below because I feel like, you know, that's what we do. We talk, we comment, and this is a community and that's what we do, Okay. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and stage dive into the episode, okay? So, uh, we begin the episode with Jen calling Kristen to tell her that she felt like her coming to visit OG to ask the questions was noble, okay? Jen relays that she also felt like she didn't receive any or experience any color issues either, okay? And all I'm thinking about is Jen's hat in this confessional and it's sitting off to the side of her head like so but it's real little you know what i'm saying it's a real little hat that's sitting off to the side and it just like this and to me i mean i get it maybe it's you know I, I, it's fashions okay it's fashions um but i ain't like it okay that's just me i ain't like it and maybe i ain't got no sense of style i don't know I feel like I do. I got my own taste, but I ain't like it. Did you like it? Let me know in the comment section down below. It was just distracting for me. I think that's what it was. It was distracting. It's probably fashions, okay, but it was distracting me. Every time I'm looking at the screen, I'm looking at this hat sitting off, off, the, off the side of your head, and I'm wondering to myself, how is the hat staying on? Is it a strap? What is going on? Somebody let me know in the comment section because I was wondering. I was, I was trying to figure it out. Anyway. So Jen is still refusing to go to the other house. Kristen says that everyone has let the past go, but Jennifer says she's more concerned about the hoes in her own house versus the hoes in the other one, okay? 
So then Jen goes to chat with the Jackie. Now Jackie immediately gets to into it about Jennifer's attitude from, from the day before, but she is willing to let it go. I like how fast Jackie moves on from issues. That to me is indicative of a great reality TV personality because Jackie really knows that there's no time to hold on to small petty grudges. Only the major ones, okay? Only the major ones, okay? Now, um, we also find out that Jackie has invited some of the new girls and both groups will be exercising shortly. Now, at Evelyn's house, Shanice, who is Evelyn's daughter, comes over to visit. I just want y'all to know that everybody that's coming into the house has been, has been tested, okay? They really make it a point to say that in the episodes and I understand why, okay? Anyway, uh, they ask, you know, uh, well, Kristen relays that Jen talked to her and agreed, and Jen also agreed that she had not faced any color issues either. Now, Evelyn feels relief at this because she feels like even though her and Jen are not messing with each other, she feels like Jen is one person that can vouch for her having never been that type of person, okay? Now, uh, but we learned that Jen, well, Shawnee learns that Jen is still hung up on Shawnee saying at the reunion from last season that she would never go on any vacation with her again. Now, this frustrates Shawnee because Shawnee's like, so you're hanging on, so our uh, us hanging out together is contingent on you coming on vacation with me, and she's over it. But I'm thinking to myself, that's risk more than that, Shawnee. You, you made statements, okay? You made statements that were alluding to you not wanting Jen around anymore. So Jen now is acting accordingly based on what you said. So you can't be frustrated because you were alienating her because of how you felt. And that was, at, that was how you felt at the time. But you still can't be mad at her. You can't be frustrated because she's not where you are right now because you said something foul to her. You said something to her that indicated how you felt about her. And now she's respecting the boundary that you put up. And now you're frustrated with her because she don't know that you'd have let the boundary down. Okay? That to me was odd. It was just odd. Anyway, Jackie at Jackie's house, they are doing some high intensity exercises. At the Evelyn house, they are all doing some namaste with the yoga, okay? Um, it is a really nice little juxtaposition here, uh, giving us the details uh, and the intricacies of the different houses. I thought this was actually really funny. Um, back at Jackie's house, OG is feeling optimistic, but she did feel like her conversation with Kristen was too much too soon. Now, this to me is actually a decent sign because what it says is that maybe she would be more open to another conversation later or she would have been more open to it later. But right now, okay, right now, she feels like she wasn't really here for Kristen, which we could tell, okay, because she felt like Kristen was fake and fraudulent. Now, what I want to I wanna point out to you guys is that this is an indication that OG does not trust the women in that other house enough to feel like she can be vulnerable with them. And it is likely because of some past experience that she has had within this group that has made her feel like she cannot trust and open up to these ladies, which is also indicative of why she recorded that conversation from last week, or she had a recording of it, I should say. Uh, let me take that back. I wanna just make it clear that she had a recording. I don't know if she recorded it herself. But what I will say, that is also indicative of the fact that she may not even trust production or the powers that be enough to provide her with an outlet to be uh, transparent and real because she's afraid that she might be edited down and marginalized and made to look crazy. Okay. So there's that. But Jackie tells her what she feels like went wrong in that conversation. And I do feel like Jackie is doing her best to try to uh, make things better for all of the women so that they can all get together because that's what Jackie is used to within this group of women, okay? Um, Malaysia, we learn, is willing to have a conversation with Jackie because she finally realizes that it's petty and she asked the lady's opinion. Now, Evelyn says, yes, because y'all have all this years of history. But I'm thinking to myself, I mean, I don't feel like you need to have years of history in order to make amends with somebody because I just kind of feel like 
you know, sometimes time can do that as well. And it's been over a year at this point. So really, honestly and truthfully, yes, I do feel like Jackie and Malaysia's friendship is definitely worth saving. But I just kind of feel like I wish Evelyn were more open to trying to save some of the relationships that she has helped uh, fracture as well. OK, um, Malaysia, we learned, has prayed for Jackie during the panorama because she knows that Jackie is a social person, but she doesn't want to go to Jackie's house in order to have that conversation. The only thing that I don't like about that situation is that if you knew and if you prayed for her during that period of time, it seems like you would have called a check up on her at some point because we learned early on in the season that Jackie had not heard from any of those ladies at all during the panorama, okay? But to Malaysia's credit, the human part of me also has to say, listen, if I'm mad at somebody, I'm not contacting them either, okay? I'm not contacting them either. But now that you're forced to, you might have to, okay? So the ladies ask Liza about Lamar. Evelyn advises her that the communication with Lamar needs to be out of her life. Malaysia can identify with this situation. Shawnee advises that she can only do so much. Liza feels like she needed to move to L.A. and get out of New York in order to escape the type of life she was living where it was all about Lamar. OK, and I really feel like it's 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 she's doing the right things and her attempts are in doing the right things. And she's coming from a great place, but it can't be at the expense of her own life. You know what I'm saying? But I also understand, too, she needs this money for these kids for the, to go to college, okay? And Lamar need to come up off them checks, okay? So I do get that aspect of it. Now, over at the other house, Nia and Naria arrive. Nia makes cheesecakes, we learn, okay? I know that. They're both from Memphis, okay? Naria has been married for uh, five years. Nia is single. Jackie wants to introduce the other ladies to the new ladies to the, to the other ladies in the other house, and we also learned that their father passed away during the panorama and they were not even able to go and visit him in the hospital, which is really sad. And they kind of bond with Jen because Jen can relate because she lost her mom a couple of years ago. So she understands their pain to a certain degree. But I thought that, you know, seeing the ladies there, it just made me real like I just felt like, dang, like. You know, it really touches home what we all have all been through over this past year. And I'm sure that a lot of people will be able to identify with those two ladies. OK, so then Evelyn calls Jackie while they, the ladies are having their Ponderosa at Jackie's house. And she tells Jackie that Malaysia is open to having a conversation with her. Uh, and Jackie feels caught off guard. She is emotional. OK, she needs to process and call Evelyn back. OK. Jackie is like, why now? Because Malaysia did hide from her earlier when, when Jackie went over to the house, okay, to, to visit the other ladies, all right? So Jackie is really emotional and all the ladies can tell that she really cares about Malaysia. And I felt like, you know, they really all want Malaysia and Jackie to get back together. And so do I, okay? The speaker, oh my God. Anyway, um... So Shawnee and Kristen wants to get Liza drunk and loosen her up so she can stand on a table and twerk, okay? Because they thinking that's going to make her situation all better, right? Now, OG at the, at, the, at the Jackie house is making an authentic Nigerian meal. And all I'm thinking is, I want me a plate, OG. I want me a plate, okay? Because it was looking kind of good. And I finally discovered why my plantains turned out the way that they did last time. Listen, I am not the best cook. And I'm going to go ahead and tell y'all that right now. And let me just go ahead and give y'all the, 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 the rub. I can't even make fried chicken, okay? But you know the reason why I have never been able to do it? Because I have never understood the concept. And I, I could have just called my mama. That when you are frying things okay you have to put a lot of oil in in the in the frying pan okay i was always just putting a dab of, of oil in there and expecting something to fry and then it would turn out uh not fried okay so that has been my issue this whole time and so as i was watching her fry the plantains i was thinking voila this is it that is what i have been doing wrong all this time so thank you og for that anyway um I'm sure I could have just watched the cooking show and found that out. But anyway, who who, who, who cares? I digress. Um, they recap meeting the sisters and they really like the girls uh, because they Nia and Noria seem very empathetic. OK, um, they seem really they all seem empathetic of Nia and Noria's, you know, having lost their their dad or whatever. 
Um, Jen chats with them and suggests they go meet the other ladies as well. But she tells them not to bring any of that negative energy over to the house because back to the house because she will be saging them down. OK, should they decide to bring that negative energy back now over at the other house, Malaysia is being the fun master and the goal is to get Liza drunk. So they play a game with her and it is a drinking game in which, you know, she either answers the question or does what the person does what's on the board or they have to take a shot. First up is Evelyn, and she decides to prank call Jackie and say that Doug is eating the box, okay? Um, and then she hangs up the phone. So, you know, Jackie is all a, a, a Twitter at this because, you know, don't nobody mess with her Doug, okay? Don't nobody mess with her Doug. Don't nobody touch her man. Don't nobody come near her man. Don't nobody look at her man. Don't nobody stand next to her man. Don't nobody eat around her man. Don't nobody breathe around her man, okay? Because that is Jackie's man, all right? So then... Um, Liza goes next and she's in the hot seat and the ladies can ask her anything. Now, they are asking about if she has ever licked any of Lamar's private parts and Liza, I love, takes the high road and the classy route and she decides to drink. And I think she has about three, four, five shots before uh, the end of the time and the ladies are impressed by how much she's able to drink. Now, let me tell you the truth, Liza. This was a very good thing because what you don't do is as a new person, come on this show and reveal too much information about your relationship, specifically because this man is in the public eye because you know that it is going to be turned into fodder for reality television. So kudos to you, Liza, for being able to see with your third eye what a lot of newbies would have fell for. Okay? Anyway, um, Jackie is still worried about the prank call. OG comes down, welcome to OG's kitchen. The ladies are loving, are loving the vibe of the house. Um, Jackie lets them know all the issues with the ladies at the other house. She puts it all on the table for the new girls and the conversation. And she talks about the conversation with uh, Kristen and Jen. Now, Jackie asked Jen how the conversation went. And, before, and, and as Jen is about to say, well, I talked to Kristen and, and OG is like, eh, 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 I don't want to hear it. Stop call, coddling them girls. Y'all need to stop. I'm, a, I'm not educating these girls on nothing. She was fraudulent, yada, 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 okay? And so Jen, for, for her part, feels like she feels like OG only wants to hear what OG has to say. Now... When, when they get down to the issue of what actually happened and they talk about the color issue, Nia and, N and Naria can identify with the colorism issue. And OG feels that Kristen was not willing to admit that something was done wrong. Now, Naria feels like sometimes people need to be explained to them what they are doing wrong. And I totally agree. Now, here's the thing about the situation with OG, okay? Um, we learned that OG feels like they, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back to, to, to Naria's statement, but OG feels like they are all adults and she's not educating anyone, okay? But, and because of the racism that she experienced as a child, it has affected her from then until now. And so Nia says, clearly, she still has some emotion left from childhood, okay? OG acknowledges that the past issues impacts how she reacts to the issues that she's facing with the women now, okay? Jackie still doesn't believe there's a color issue still in the group, but she can be empathetic to how OG feels. Now, OG leaves the table crying, okay? This is why I say, in my opinion, it is, a port it is really important to hear everyone out, and I'm, and I'm reading from my notes right now. Um, but it's also important for OG to let her guard down enough to explain what she's experiencing because sometimes it's not always apparent to everyone else. So I will, I, let's give you guys an analogy like this. And this is how I feel about the situation. I feel like sometimes we do have to educate people on what is bothersome to us and what a certain issue is. For instance, until last week, I did not even understand the concept of featurism, but I did once I heard it and then I used my context clues. And then for my part, what I did was I did my due diligence then and I started to research and I started to go down the rabbit hole to really understand the implications now and the historical context for which this, this term came to be. And I feel like Sometimes we do have to educate people and that is how we get to a place of better understanding, okay? I also understand from OG's perspective that, you know, these people are adults and there is a certain standard of behavior that she expects from them. 
However, I also feel like on the other side of that, playing devil's advocate with myself, I feel like, you know, even in relationships, let's say you get into a new friendship, let's say you get into a new relationship or a situationship or whatever you want to call it. You're talking to somebody new, right? So you're talking to somebody new, right? And, and they say or do something that triggers you. Something maybe could have, that it, it was offensive to you. Maybe it was something from your past that still bothers you. And they had no idea that it happened. And sometimes we get into issues with relationships and, and with other people because we expect for them to understand what we think is baseline behavior, right? But baseline behavior for me may not be baseline behavior for you. So what then has to happen is if I'm offended, I have to tell you why you offended me, okay? Because I can't expect you to re be, be able to read my mind. And I don't, and I now know as an adult, okay, as a seasoned adult, I should say, that I have to sometimes explain to the person why they did something wrong to me, why it was wrong to me, so that they can have a better understanding of, oh, I get it now. I didn't realize, A, that I was doing that, or B, that that would offend you. Now I know, and so now I can correct the behavior moving forward, and that is how you keep the lines of communication open, but that is also how you get everybody on the same page of understanding, okay? So I do believe that in, in a certain to a certain degree, OG's going to have to budge a little bit because I do feel like with Kristen going there and then as we saw in the preview for next week wanting to go back there is a desire there to educate herself to learn more and to figure out a way to move past it and get to a space where she says I can fix this issue okay that's how I'm looking at it right so but in this moment I do have to tell you Again, and I have to go back to my earlier statement, but this is also why it's important to understand and to hear people out. OG felt safer talking to these two new ladies than she did feeling talking to Kristen because of her past experiences with Kristen and this group. These two new ladies coming in from the outside, she was able to have a dialogue with, and I felt like I personally got to know OG a lot better through her conversation with these two new ladies and Jackie and Jennifer included, right? So I felt like, especially when she when she kind of talked about the issue that happened to her in the past, and when she got up and she left the table and she was crying, my heart dropped because I felt like this is it. This is it. And Nia and Naria were able to articulate some things that based on their observations, I think what a lot of us may not have already readily received from OG, what we, a lot of us hadn't gotten yet. And some of us had already gotten, right? So I felt like they were able to bridge that gap and it was very, very interesting. And again, my heart ached for OG because clearly, you know, the things that she has experienced are so hurtful and it made me also realize if it's, and, and again, I always, and I, it made me realize it, but I feel like I've always known it. If it's happened to one person, it's happened to thousands of other people. And I feel like, what I feel like is this. If our sister is, is telling us she's hurting because of an issue that's happening within the group, it's our responsibility to cover our sister and to understand what she's going through and to and to reach out and to keep reaching out and to and to make and make sure she feels loved, secure and safe and all that good stuff. And I feel like that's going to happen in the next episode. I do. I do. I do. I do. Anyway, moving right along. Um, Liza, the next day has a hangover and she's finally ready to let go of Lamar and have a good time. Now, Jackie comes over to the Evelyn house. She's bringing Nia and Naria and they are worried. Uh, Malaysia and the girls are worried because they feel like they don't know if Jackie just met some girls off the internet, okay? And she's bringing them over to the house and she don't know what kind of characters they're about to be, okay? So the ladies decide that they would take shots before Jackie and crew get there, but they also have shots ready for Jackie and Nia and Naria when they get there. And I'm like, yes, this is how you welcome people into your home. I'm going to tell you the truth. Anytime y'all about to have a get together, y'all about to have a party, y'all about to have anything, you are about to have any type of Ponderosa, Start off with shots. It opens the door. It just makes everybody feel instantly comfortable, okay? Um, they do some small talk, and then it gets tense and quiet, and Malaysia's finally like, let's cut the BS. And I'm like, finally. She wants Jackie to fess up to what she did. So they finally go outside, and they decide to have a sit down and talk, and Jackie's like, girl, you know you my sister. And Malaysia's like, am I? Am I? Am I? 
Well, if I was, then why are you doing all these things to me? And how many times do I have to allow you to keep effing me over? And that is to be continued. So, you know, we're going to continue the conversation next week. But let me know what y'all thought about the episode down in the comment section down below. It was an eye opener for me and I thoroughly enjoyed I thoroughly enjoyed the scenes with uh, OG, Jackie, Nia, Naria, and Jennifer. It was just so interesting. I loved it. I absolutely loved it because I finally felt like we were taking steps to resolve and hearing and understanding. And I like that. I like it. I love it. Anyway, that's all I got for y'all today. Um, I'm about to go uh, and uh, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell button, and I will catch you in the next video.